Ladies and gentlemen, not just one, but two new snapshots have arrived for Minecraft Java Edition 1.15. They are 19w38a and then shortly followed by 19w38b, which fixes a crash in the A snapshot. Other than that, these snapshots contain a bunch of bug fixes for gameplay and a bunch of new technical features. My name is Sly Slime, I'm here to guide you through all the changes in Minecraft 19w38a and 38b. Let's start with all of those gameplay bug fixes. A couple to ender pearls. If you threw an ender pearl on a server and then logged out, when you logged back in the ender pearl would be gone. And another bug was essentially the same thing but for a single player. If you threw an ender pearl and then reloaded your world then the ender pearl would not properly teleport you when it landed. Both of those fixed in this version. A number of fixes to rideable things. When you dismounted something you can ride, like a boat or a horse, they would teleport back to their previous position for a short moment before sliding into place and sometimes they would even disappear altogether. Those bugs have been fixed in this version. There's another bug in multiplayer specifically, where if you watched another player mount something and ride away, like boarding a minecart and riding off, then once they start getting further away they would teleport back to the start position and stand there looking silly. That has also been fixed in this version. More boat fixes, when you exited a boat you ended up on top of the boat almost always, instead of ending up in front of the boat. And the boats breaking lily pads would create twice as many particles as intended. Some fixes to pillagers and raids. There was some fairly extreme lag spikes sometimes when pillagers were loaded, especially when they were stuck. And this was made even worse by a bug that caused pillagers to sometimes not despawn. Both of those fixed in this version, together with a fix for raids, where the raid horn sound would play globally in all of the villagers on a server, not just the one with the raid. Moving on to technical changes and let's start with one for a game rule. The fire damage game rule didn't disable magma block damage properly, that is fixed in the snapshot. Other command changes include a new mode for the schedule command, an optional argument has been added to the end of that that says append or replace, which defaults to replace. If you specify replace that is exactly the same behavior as it used to have, but if you specify append you can now schedule multiple invocations of the same command at different points in time. There's also now a schedule clear with an ID to remove all existing scheduled invocations and that will return the number of instances that were removed. The kill command can now once again be used without an argument. If invoked without an argument it will act exactly like if you had given it at S as the argument. There is a new data storage that you can use from the data command. It is simply called storage and it is a global general purpose storage. That means it is shared between all dimension and it is saved between reloads so that you can put whatever data you want in there and then retrieve it later. It is not related to any entities, it is just data that can be stored and retrieved using the data command and execute store. Most of the rest of the technical things are related to loot tables and how you can use them. Predicates from loot tables can now be defined in separate files. That means you can lift out a condition predicate into a separate file, place it in a folder called predicates in a data pack, and then use that inside of loot tables. In the loot table where you use it, you use a reference condition and you give that the name of your new file. That's not all you can do with them, however, there's a new execute if predicate subcommand and that will evaluate a custom predicate that's defined in the way we just spoke about and only execute the command if the predicate returns true. There's also a selector argument called predicate and you can use that to apply a predicate to a selector condition and only return the entities for which that predicate returns true. There are more changes to loot tables. The entity loot table predicate now accepts a player field which checks player properties and if the target is not a player then the predicate will fail. The properties of this are level to check a range of allowed player levels, game mode which checks against the same values as the game mode command, stats which lists a bunch of statistics to match which has entries of type like minecraft colon custom, the statistic as stat like minecraft colon sneak underscore time and the value which is an integer range. You can also check for player recipes which is a map of recipe IDs and boolean values. 
and the value of each recipe tells if that recipe should be available or should not be available in order for the predicate to successfully evaluate. Finally, you can use advancement as a property which is a map of advancement IDs and the values are either boolean which means to check if the advancement is done or not or an object which means you can check the completion of individual criteria. The entity predicate now also accepts a team field which matches a team name. Location predicates as well accepts a block and fluid sub predicates. The available fields for those are block or fluid which is an exact match to a block or fluid ID, a tag which matches a block or fluid tag, NBT which matches block entity NBT and that of course is only for blocks, or state which is a map of name and value properties where the value can be an integer, for instance for power levels in redstone, a boolean, for instance for things like powered, or a string or object with optional min and max properties. It also has a light sub-predicate which is an integer range and matches the visible light at that location. The location check also now has new parameters that are offset x, offset y and offset z to offset the location to check. There's also a time check condition that can check the date time and the value is the range of accepted values and there's a period argument and if that is present then it will determine how often the value range repeats. So for instance if you set this to 24,000 then the value will operate on a time of day because there are 24,000 ticks in a day. One final thing to mention about these snapshots is that they contain another big chunk of work for the graphics modernization effort known as Blaze 3D. And that means that indeed we already have seen an increase in rendering related bugs in the snapshot. You should not see any specific changes in terms of rendering in the snapshot, but there will be additional bugs. Be warned. And speaking of bugs, snapshots are always likely to have more bugs than final releases and if you upgrade a world to the snapshots, you can never downgrade that world to an earlier version again. So if you want to try this version, do so on a test world or on a backup of your world. And if you do want to try it but you don't know how to, then click on the link on the video right now, that will take you to a tutorial video about how to get and play the latest Minecraft snapshot. And that was all from me for this time. I hope you found this update video useful and if you did, please help me out in return, leave a like and share it with your friends. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Minecraft news, then please subscribe to my channel where I do update videos for every new snapshot, pre-release or release of Minecraft. My name is Slice Slime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.